Welcome to Seniors at Play. I'm your host, Cassandra, and I'm joined again by Dr. Mark Rubenstein, a physical therapist and owner of Jersey Live Well. Welcome. Thank you for having me again. And also we have two extra special guests, uh, Dr. Phil Felton, which is a, which you were a molecular biologist and a master's runner, okay. and also Ruth Levy, a physical therapist now for 65 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you Thank very you. much. So in our last segment, I spoke to uh, Dr. Rubenstein about uh, the five elements of health and well-living. And he mentioned you, Ruth, in one of my segments. And what was it that you mentioned about Ruth and one of the elements that she practiced? Well, we talked about a number of things. Um, Ruth and I met at one of my lectures in the Plainsboro Library. And um, she has some amazing experiences in her life. and. Um, one thing we spoke about was in terms of um, just Ruth is resilient. You know, you could just tell she, she does not let anything stop her. She has this great attitude uh, that, that nothing will stop her. She keeps going and uh, maybe she can speak to, you know, how she builds her resiliency and how she's been able to, you know, uh, be as active as she ha you know, as she's been. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and be as healthy as she's been. Mm -hmm. So Ruth, tell me a little bit about your uh, regular, your exercises, because you're a physical therapist. I am still so, a physical therapist. Okay. I still like to work. I like to teach, and I like to um, exhibit. I just don't speak. Mm -hmm. My body works along with my speech. If I talk about a particular type of movement, if I talk about a movement that will be damaging, I participate with my own structure. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I find it very, sometimes very fatiguing and very um, exciting, and yet I feel very innervated because I feel that I've brought some of the experience. And if, when you age, you learn more, mm -hmm. and the longer you live, the more you learn, so the more you can pass on. And I, I find it very, very exciting. And if I'm teaching people who are going to be working with people my age who need to be treated and, and brought back to function, they, I, I can show them what they do and having a positive outlook instead of saying, oh, this hurts or that hurts, and oh, they start <laughs> crying in front of you. And what, what, that's not very productive. Right. So if you, you try to engage them in areas that they will get pleasure in saying, oh, I can do this, mm. oh, I can do that, and wait, now maybe I can do something else, maybe I can increase it slowly, surely, with good uh, good posture, good speech, a smile, and if somebody, yes, see you smiling <laughs> now, and if somebody does something good to give them recognition for it, mm -hmm. and not just sit there and feel sorry for themselves, mm -hmm. because it's not productive, mm -hmm. it's not, and, and if, if you see things are happening that are positive, and, and if you look at the positive side of things, there's always something oh, it's raining today, I don't feel good, yeah, but it's not snowing and it's not icy, right, this so we have true. to be right, 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 right. Oh, we had it this week. That's a week. good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's that's an aspect of building resilience. Is right. Having, right. having that positive attitude. You know, there used to be. They used to just say, you know, it's good to have a positive attitude. I, I read a book in the past. It was Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking. But recently, from UPenn, there's been a whole lot of research on positive psychology, and it actually keeps us healthier. So, yeah. you know, well, Ruth is well, this, you know, this kind of thing. What you have steps in your house? You can't. You're going to fall down those steps. Right. You've got to move into an apartment that has no steps, that mm -hmm. has no this and no that. So what do you do with your life? Right. You know, there's no challenge. Mm. There's no, um, uh, actually, the challenge in, in moving over an obstacle, which you know is safe in somebody to help teach you and to have the strength to do it, means you should be exercising. Mm. Yeah. And the daily mm. exercising can be something as simple as standing up. <laughs> I because I don't have too much room to sit. I stand up and eat sometimes, and I find it very good, and I can move backwards and back and forth to the, to the toaster oven, to the uh, microwave, mm -hmm. and, and take what I like and make choices that I like and enjoy, enjoy something and let somebody know that I, I feel happy about it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that, that kind of thing. And that's why I'm meeting Mark and, and listening to him and then meeting his parents and then it was such a, a, a gratifying, uh, it, was a, it was a gratifying time. And I, I couldn't wait to come back. And I invited my, some other relatives and my granddaughter came to one. And hopefully we'll see a lot more of Mark because I think what he had to say is very, very exciting and mm -hmm. very innovating. That's fascinating, yeah. yeah. And so talk to me more about your social connectedness. Like 
How are you in the social world? In the social world? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I live alone now. Okay. Okay? But, and I don't sit and watch television because that's not communication to me. Right. When I go out, I can go shopping. And where do I like to shop now? I like to go to Target. Mm -hmm. Why do I like to go to Target? Not for their bargains, but I like the staff there. Mm -hmm. I can ask them for their assistance. Mm -hmm. I, I like the people who shop there. I can talk to them and talk about, gee, this looks good, this smells good. I think I'm gonna try this one. Have you tried it yet? And I, I end up in a, in a conversation with them and sometimes a relationship. But it's, it's being able to smile and to recognize and, and instead of walking around with a sour, mm -hmm. that, that kind of stuff. It's not productive. It doesn't right. bring you any pleasure. Right, and how many days a week do you say you get out? I get out, well, uh, I get out every day of okay. the week, yes. And uh, when they say, watch out, be careful, be careful, be careful. What are you talking to me about? Of course I'm <laughs> careful. Right. I watch the way I walk. I try to keep my posture proper. Mm -hmm. And sometimes lately, because of an incident that I had, I use a cane. Mm -hmm. And I started out with the walk right now. I have the cane. And when people see an older person, they immediately want to do things for them and, and take away their independence. And they say, well, can I, can I help you with this? Can I help you with that? And my comment is, don't do for me what I can do for myself, because the less I do, the less I'll be able to do. When I need your help, I'll ask for it, and then I'll take the kids and say, yeah, you better be there <laughs> to help me. I right? love that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And, so, and how often do you, with this social aspect of it, how often do you recommend it's, for... Like I said, it, it's really variable. It depends mm -hmm. on the person. Um, you know, when Ruth tells me about her social connections, you know, she tells me she goes to the theater. She, yeah. she, she, she She's uh, involved in a group at the, at the senior center. Um, she goes to the library all the time. Yeah. She goes out. So... You know that for her that works. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but yeah. there, there a, isn't there isn't a certain number of mm -hmm. connections. There isn't right. a certain amount of clubs. It's right. just that for each of us, we need it to some extent. And you think understanding the person, Ruth is an outgoing person, and she yeah. does like to connect with yeah. people. So for her, that works. Right. But yeah. for people that might be a little more introverted, like again, just reaching out to one person, you know, a yeah. week might be what they're There's prescribed right. for. Right. It just. Yeah. It really depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? this this uh, Friday, the seniors are going to be meeting and they're going to cel be celebrating people whose birthdays are in December. And uh, I'm also going to read them. This is the month of Hanukkah. And I'm, you know Curious George? Mm -hmm. I have a story about Curious George and, and celebrating Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful story. So you're going to speak on that. And you're gonna, and that's gonna wonderful. I think that's wonderful. A little holiday spirit. Right, you know. right, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So not to leave you out, Dr. Phil no, Felton, no, no. Um, you're a molecular biologist, a master's runner. Tell, what is a master's runner? I don't think that I know that. Well, master's runners are age group runners. I mean, I, <clears throat> I was running track from elementary school. Okay right through high school, university, and so on. But um, when I um, came to the States, I discovered there were masters athletes. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is 35 through 40, 40 through 45, et cetera, five-year age groups, mm -hmm. all the way through, um, with no limit. We even go up, we have some people who run the 100-year age group. Um, I hope to be there one day. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so then I started um, competing more again because there was a venue for me to compete. I'd sort of retired from competitive track back in the UK because I didn't have any masters running and I was getting a little bit too slow to run with the 20 year olds. So, but then once I got here and I was in my 30s, I started running masters track. So I started running in the different uh, age groups then. And how often do you run? Um, well, right now, my goal is usually to run twice a week and work out twice a week running and two times with weights and in the gym. So when I was in my 40s, it was more like six days a week. Okay. And um, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 69 in about oh, a couple wow. of weeks' time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Both of them have birthdays recently. Mm, right. Yeah. So yeah. you're 69, yeah. you're 89, I'm reading in your bio. Uh, yeah, what? Are, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what did you say? No, 89, no. are you 89? 87. 87. I, I okay. just, no, I'm 88 officially 88. now. Okay. And I started on my 89th year. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I decided to have two celebrate half birthdays, mm -hmm. which means every six months. Oh, very nice. So that I, 
I, if I make it to this half birthday, no. And I was born the same day as Beethoven, but oh, not wow. the same year. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a depression baby. I was born in 29. <laughs> and I just had a birthday on Saturday. Oh, wow. And well, now I birthday. have to start thinking about June 16th. Oh, well, so happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> so it's been a great And happy birthday to you as well. well and so with running, um, there's a social aspect in there as well because he's able to run with people. Do you always run alone? Oh, I run with people. That's, in fact, how I know Mark because he's been treating the Matt who I work out with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've always found that to be... Um, I've done my best when I've had somebody to train Oh, with. really? Yes. I believe um, that. Yeah. There's studies that show that. Yeah, There's studies that show that we get better results and we have better compliance when, yeah. when, we're, you know, when we're connected. Well, and well I, I run faster when I run against him. Mm -hmm. Also, he'll call me up and say, are you able to run on Tuesday? He's already called me up about running tomorrow. And um, we'll go and run tomorrow. And sometimes you get up and you're dragging a little bit and think, ah, I'll run on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then you don't. <laughs> you know? no. So having something to work out with. Um, back in my 30s and 40s, I was working out with a whole bunch, uh, including Olympic athletes at, mm -hmm. at Princeton. Um, and again, that was the thing, you know, it was having the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. That's important. Uh, you've guy, always had it and yeah. so that it's always okay. been good. But one of the things we, you don't, I don't know, how do we touch on endurance with with you, Dr. Felt. May I interrupt of with course, this? Because of course, of course. Because genetically, I'm still involved. My son is now 56, and uh -huh. he's a master lifter. Oh, okay. So he's, he's a weightlifter, uh -huh. yeah. and he's been uh, working out and working out. And mm -hmm. very important for him, when he finishes his regular, his work, he goes to the gym, he works out, comes back, and then he'll swim, works out, and comes back. and. It's part of his life. Mm, yeah. That's great. And, and, and I love him for it. And mm -hmm. genetically, I feel I'm still involved because mm he's -hmm. got some of my genes, <laughs> some of my husband's genes. So these five elements yeah. that you've mentioned before, yes. how do you feel we touch, how do you feel that uh, Phil touches on these things? With He's got his running, he's got his social support. But what about the endurance part? What about the, what are, what are the other parts? Yeah, um, well, we talk about, you know, resiliency and how do we build resiliency. And I think, you know, what I've seen, you know, talking to Phil and, and, and Matt, his partner, is that, you know, <laughs> Very much they're they're consistent and they set goals and I think mm -hmm. that is a, a major having that control Structure. like that yeah. it, almost like a, we call it internal locus of control that they they can affect their outcomes they can mm -hmm. affect their health by how they train I think that is something very admirable and uh, you know the fact that they've been so consistent you know you know he says you know maybe four days a week and and when he was running a number of years back maybe it was five six days mm -hmm. a week that takes a, you know, a lot of dedication right. and uh, and resilience, you know, to battle the, even just small injuries, battle mood changes, mm -hmm. right. all these things. And, and that's why, you know, it's so important that, you know, we do it with, with people. And because we all, there's days we wake up and we're like, yeah. you just don't feel, you don't have right. that drive. Right. But, but um, having a partner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think there is that internal drive, mm -hmm. but there's also having that external drive helps kind of balance, you know, balance it all out. You, you know, the, the comment is, I can, I can do it, but I will do it. Mm -hmm. I'm motivated. Right. And when you see somebody else working, and you say, I'm going to do mm -hmm. it. That's right. <laughs> and, and you get such a thrill out of saying, look, I did it, I did it, I did it. And I start singing to myself in the car. I made it. Right. I did it. Right. Yeah. Including the driving and the crazy weather and mm -hmm. stuff like the that. The thing, thing about enduring at it, too, is, you know, I mean, this isn't jogging, this is sprinting, for example. And uh, if you don't do it for a while, it's hard to get back, back into, into it, it because yeah. the first time you do it after a bit of a layoff, it hurts. Mm. And you, you're expecting it to hurt. You know it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. and you know it's going to be a few weeks before it stops hurting. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be careful um, yeah. with how you get into it, but also you have to get into the rhythm. So. Mm -hmm. It's important not to have long periods when you don't do it because then it'll be it'll be tough to get back in. Right. Yeah, that's a good example also of how uh, Dr. Felton, you know, in terms of dosing, how much he exercises to get to get back to a certain level. He knows he keeps very detailed um, description of of what he's done on a certain day, and he knows that in order to get to that next level, he has to do this amount at right. this speed. Yeah. And uh, you know, we talk about again dosing the right amount, the mm -hmm. right intensity in order to achieve our goals. And again, it doesn't matter what age we're at, we can push the envelope. We can mm -hmm. challenge older adults with weights, with speed. Um, a lot of times, again, it's out of fear that, mm -hmm. we, that we don't do that, we don't challenge them. And I think 
you know, that's, that's again, the very important message that we're trying to spread is that no matter where you're at, at any age, you know, the same principles apply. Right. And um, and we just have to realize that, you know, yeah. old does not equal weak. Right. And yeah. that, um, you know, anybody can make gains mm -hmm. if you're dedicated, motivated. And, uh, and sometimes we need help with that. And that's why, you know, having a friend or having a provider or somebody there that, that, mm -hmm. um, that helps improve your consistency or compliance right. um, because unfortunately you know, what we see with exercises a lot of people tend to fall off at times and um, and that's why you know it just um, having that plan mm -hmm. and, and reaching out to others and um, and just enduring mm -hmm. you know is uh, it's important. having resilience right. is, is uh, important to build that mm -hmm. and you th and you both mentioned that you uh, are you have a group or you meet with a group and you're telling yeah. a story yeah. Can, do you see in in that with speaking to other athletes there's some fear oh yeah there's that like uh pre-traumatic stress well this of is what one of the alone, things that I, I said instead of a post-traumatic stress syndrome people are uh -huh. developing pre-traumatic stress disorders and that's a horror uh -huh. that's a horror and they shouldn't they shouldn't do it they should they shouldn't say oh you have steps get rid of the steps right. no i will teach you i will work with you i will strengthen you your balance your strengths and look at how good it feels to have achieved that. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. now, now, Ruth will be the first to tell you that we can't ignore safety. Right. We need to preach. Yeah, right. 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 We right. need to preach safety, and yeah. especially in older adults, that's super important. But it, just because we preach safety doesn't mean we can't challenge. And right. I think that's right. the key. No, is we I, need. I, I, challenge I the mind. Challenge the, the body. body. Right. right. But how do you? How do you? Because I know in speaking to elderly, other people here who have been here, they, you know, there are certain things that are very scary to them. There's a lot of fear in being alone, living alone, having to do things alone. So how do you do that? How do you empower someone who's lived their whole life mm -hmm. and they think they know everything? How do you do that? How do you empower them to say, I can do it, I will do it? I can do it. do it. To work in a group mm -hmm. and not to work alone. In other words, I live alone, but I go to a, uh, let's say, the um, yoga, certain aspects of, of yoga, which is a wonderful Oh, now they have developed the chair yoga exercise program. Mm -hmm. So it's yoga on a different level. And then you get the balance back. You mm -hmm. get the relaxation back. You get the range of motion back slowly, gently. And to work with people who have a positive attitude, mm -hmm. that I right. think is the most important. But that's an issue with some elderly, uh, too. Absolutely. We know that. And we'll attitude. talk, and we were t we've treated patients through the years. You know, falls is a major, yeah. uh, major driver of... of um, of death and the older adults like of from injury so mm -hmm. you know we really need to um how do we reduce fear of falling right. and, and one of them you know uh, how do we reduce falling is is reducing the fear of falling so yes. some of that is just doing yeah, certain, you know you you just you you have no idea oh, oh my oh, god yeah. i can't right there's so, no fear in everything so doing yeah. so practicing yeah. things that challenge people's balance is a way to do that so mm -hmm. uh, it's it's explaining to them that they are that they have resilience, that mm -hmm. they can do. The human body is amazing. Right. The things mm -hmm. you know that we can do with it, how, how, how much our body can withstand. Yeah. Um, that's what we have to teach people, is that our bodies are strong. You yeah. know? And you know and something that, we that, can do things. that so I, I find very interesting, to put them in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. And look at, look at your posture. Look at the way you're leaning. And you don't even realize it. And, and you, you know, you, you suddenly, you're, you're correcting this person in the mirror not realizing it's yourself. Mm -hmm. That's one of the issues that I, I had to uh, work with, which made it very, very, I felt very gratified. I said, who's that old lady? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And Dr. Felton, you mentioned earlier that you run basically your entire life. So how Pretty is much. that? Yeah. Was that? Pretty, Pretty much. much. Yeah. So how has that now, as you're getting older, how has that affected you? Is it, is it more like, a mind thing like is it like i i'm so used to doing this i get up every day it's like a job right i get up every day and go to work yeah. or is it more something that you kind of have to talk yourself into doing well it's a part a part a little bit of the quality of life i mean when i was an undergrad mm -hmm. i'd come out of the lab i'd been in the lab all afternoon mm -hmm. and then we'd go out for a workout we'd go out for a run for about an hour or so and you didn't think about work mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. hour you're thinking about something else. You're thinking about running. You're doing this. It's a complete break from the routine. Mm -hmm. And it was the same when you know I was teaching and researching at Princeton. But I most nights I'd go out and run. I'd mm -hmm. be out and work out. 
Get hour and a half or something. Before. Completely drain yeah. your mind of what you're doing mm -hmm. and relax more. That's Would fun. you recommend running before bed? Because <laughs> that goes into yeah. getting good sleep. <laughs> well, exercise is really related to sleep. So mm -hmm. there's yeah. a lot of studies that show that when we exercise, we sleep better. Yeah. However, it's not recommended to do it right before bed because that kind of revs our body up and right. we want to kind of mm -hmm. bring our body down. Mm -hmm. So it, it is not recommended, you know, caffeine before bed, right. yeah. alcohol before bed, mm -hmm. you know, exercise before bed. You know, those are things... We can do, but you know we have to be mindful of the time that we do that. Right. And uh, again, exercise is a, definitely a major promoter of sleep, and mm -hmm. that's you know again, it's how these elements interact. Like we're talking mm -hmm. about movement and and recover and sleep, and it just shows you you know again by by moving you're going to aid your sleep. And mm -hmm. you know we know that um, you know insomnia is a big issue. In, in, in as we age, it becomes more of an issue with women right. and older adults. So again, um, whatever we can do, you know, if it's exercise, if it's Meditation, mindfulness, meditation. breathing, um, you know, just using good sleep hygiene, you know, it's all important because, um, you know, it's tough because our bodies recover when we sleep. Right. So if we don't get that sleep, you know, it, it, it leads to chronic disease and, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's heart disease or diabetes, they're, they're all linked. So mm -hmm. um, it's really important That's that awesome. we... Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I used to work out in the evenings, you know, I, I'd work out, then I'd have a meal, then it'd be a few hours before I'd go to bed it be in that sort of order, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, and usually have a good workout, usually sleep pretty well right. afterwards. So yeah. you both can say, without any issues, you get some good rest. <laughs> there are no... Sometimes Because you both other... seem to, they both seem to have always lived a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. But what do you say to someone who has never been like Dr. Felton or like, like yeah. what do you say to uh, that's a, like It's that? a, again, another really good question. I think it's a matter of just getting started mm -hmm. you know meeting people you know giving people the right intervention mm -hmm. you know at the right time right. to the right person mm -hmm. yeah. that's really what it's all about you know it's not a one-size-fits-all it's not you know, we call it a, a complex system mm -hmm. it's not a program that we could say you know do all these things and you will be healthy like we have to just you know just pick one element mm -hmm. and just get started mm -hmm. and I think that's the message a message of hope positivity mm -hmm. um, that strength that we all have it within us right. and um, and, uh, and just, you know, helping, talking to your doctors, your physical therapists, people that are invested in your health right. about how do we do this? How do we apply this in a practical, you know, set, mm. setting? And again, it's just picking one and it's finding what's important to that person and what they're ready to do. We talk about readiness to change as mm -hmm. a really big thing. Some right. people are not ready to change their diet. Right. So maybe they're ready to exercise and maybe they're ready to go to sleep a little earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but just meeting people where they are and, and starting the process and saying that you can do this. Okay. So let's you say you, you have a patient who's lived their whole life, let's say 65, 70 years, yeah. doing everything totally opposite of what you recommend. Sure, sure. And they have chronic diseases. Yeah. How soon can the body recover from some yeah, of this that's a, that's a, stress? That's a really, that good, is... really good question. It depends on the person, <laughs> depends on the individual. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, we know that... Um, Realistically. Even, even, you know, even if we, you know, what, we, what I learned through a lot of my studies is uh, even if we prevent somebody from not getting worse, mm -hmm. and it sound, doesn't mm -hmm. sound like right, a good thing. Right, right. But, but that makes but, sense. But, yeah, but yeah. That, is, that, that is something extremely yeah. powerful mm -hmm. to keep them where they're at, at that certain level of function, okay. Maybe they even have pain. Keep them there so that they can do what they're doing. Um, but just starting with that first step. And if it's just moving, let's just get you moving. Like, right. let's just work on getting you up, whether it's coming to physical therapy, meeting with a friend at the gym, whatever it may be, um, just standing up from a chair, right. just yeah. getting started. Yeah, exactly. And if you have questions, that's where healthcare providers, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we're here for. We're mm -hmm. here to help people. That's the most important thing. And, and, uh, and try to help people before that happens. If it happens, we are here. Right. We can pull people back. You know, it's, right. it's, it's a team approach. Mm -hmm. It's not just us, it's the patient, it's their family members. All, mm -hmm. these, all these group, um, we're all in. invested mm -hmm. in helping people be healthy. But um, obviously the earlier we get the message out, mm -hmm. and earlier with any age, I, with any age, we could work with healthier, older adult right. and keep them where they're at. And mm -hmm. that's a great thing, right. you know? Um, but it really yeah. depends. And um, I think just to give people hope and say, you know, we can improve. We, we can see improvements in blood pressure and heart rate just from starting to exercise. Right. So, so little things can make big improvements okay. in mood, you know, uh, in mental health. So um, just getting started is mm -hmm. the message. Wow. Okay, there's one area that I would like to uh, suggest uh -huh. that I started doing a long time ago, 
And I find the exercise that occurs in the brain, in the hands, and I'm going to talk now about puzzles, mm -hmm. jigsaw puzzles. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing something, and it's got to be a subject that you like and admire, and suddenly you forget about everything. In fact, I, I don't have television on in the house. I have the radio so, and some music or some news or something. But seeing pieces fit together, mm -hmm. seeing a color join a color or a shape join a shape, and you get that interaction, you get such satisfaction out of that. Mm -hmm. I and it becomes it. almost an addiction. So I said, no, it's not an addiction. It's a passion. Right. So we mm -hmm. want to keep it at the healthy level. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's one more piece. One more mm -hmm. piece. That's exercise right. for your brain. Yeah. 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 The that, brain that and the right. hands and mm -hmm. fingers. And that kind of thing is people wouldn't even think of it. Right. What? Exercise? Right. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you all so much. Yeah. Dr. Rusi, of course, thank you so much for joining us again. It was a pleasure. And for bringing a these special guests. Yeah, thank Happy you. birthday Great to stories. you both. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> again, thank you for sharing your stories. Thank, thank you for showing. Um, I hope to hear more segments. I think you have other, we have more to talk about in the future, and I want to definitely see you there mm -hmm. filming from the Plainsboro. Um, that's our show. Join us next time. Mm -hmm.